Hello, it's BNT Audios, and we're doing another Wednesday Adams ex listener video. This is where you meet her parents. Um, and I just want to say sorry for the music in the background. My parents are playing music, and it is so annoying. My mom has been playing all fucking day. It is so annoying. Anyway, let's get started. Links will be in the description. My parents wish to meet you. You almost spat out your drink at the suddenness of your girlfriend's words. Well, good morning to you, dear Rose Thorn. You coughed while Wednesday patted your back until your airways cleared up. Why do your parents want to meet me? Did they ask about me? What did you say? Please tell me you didn't tell them about that time I trick tripped and accidentally pulled down Ajax Beanie and Mrs. Thornhill accidentally got stoned. You pestered Wednesday with question after question after question after question, but it was more out of your nervous habit rather than being annoying. You were just worried about what finally getting to meet her parents and whatever they said to her in confidence would immediately be reacted retracted once they got to know you other than being your girlfriend's daughter <laughs> my darling wednesday's face softened at your worries she then held your hand in hers making you look across with an in look at her with an insecurity written all over your face you fret over nothing my parents aren't shallow that redact their state their statements you're already beloved by thing you both looked to thing who was having his nails painted by enid in matte black color you smiled at the hand before looking back at Wednesday, who was already looking at you with a rarity of a smile spread across her lips. You were thankful for her attempts of easing your worries as you brought your arms around her waist, drawing her closer. How could I compete with such beauty? You spoke softly. Don't inflate things, ego. He won't let me live it down if you do, Wednesday replied, but noticed how you didn't take your eyes off her. I wasn't talking about thing, you said, eyes closing as closing shut as you felt her lips draw to yours. Opening them once again, Wednesday draws herself away. Okay, we get it. You're both cute and adorable and in love and shit, but please refrain from being so gothically cutesy in front of my client. Thank you, Enid says as she gestures, gestured to Thing, who was either trying to fan himself or trying to get his nails to dry faster. You weren't quite sure, but you found it humorous. As you felt a smile creep up on your lips, alrighty then. We'll leave you and your client to it, he said to Enid, who gave you a soldier's salute before facing Wednesday, preventing your arm, pre presenting her arm to you, and you breathed a nervous sigh. I believe your parents await us, my lady of darkness. Wednesday could feel the tension as she slipped an arm through your arm, bringing her hand to intertwine with yours, squeezing it reassuringly, re reassuringly as you felt her black-painted nails gently bite into your skin. Relax, my love. They can smell fear. She whispered in your ear as she led you both out to the dorm and to the entrance hall. Out of the school, the sleek black car pulled up. A tall woman emerged from the car first, with black hair as, not, as black as night cascading down her shoulders that matched her black dress, which made her look as though she was gliding through billows of black mist. She was beautiful. You could easily tell she was Wednesday's mother because of the beauty of her statue, stature. You could create the beauty that was your girlfriend next to you. To come out of the car was a short man dressed in a black pinstripe suit. He immediately rushed to his wife's side, side joining her, their hands together tightly, as though they were scared to be separated from one another. He was a handsome man in his own right. They could tell, You could tell he treated Wednesday's mother like a goddess and how openly affectionate he was with her and vice versa. It was rare, rare to see an openly happy husband and wife. It always seemed that they stopped, though. It, it always seemed that by the time they stopped having kids or would miss, or were in midst of having them, the magic of their relationship gives away into a hostile environment that the kids are primary victims of. You were extremely happy that Wednesday was born into two loving people as her parents. However, you noticed how her shoulders deflated as she didn't see who whom she wanted to see the most. Pugsley's not with them. I guess he's still in school, still getting shoved into a locker somewhere, she murmured under her breath, a little disappointed. I'm sure your brother's jo your I'm sure your brother join will join next time. You reassure her, bringing her hand up to a tender kiss before your eyes widen in realization of what you've just done in the presence of her parents. You look over at Morticia and Gomez, who were already looking at you and their daughter with a soft expression. As they turned to one another, I believe that's the little mouse who stole our viper's heart, Gomez told Morticia, who only smiled sweetly, gripping her husband's hand. 
I believe so, too, she started, before looking over at you with observant eyes, making you stand straighter than you ever were. She's just adorable, don't you think, dear Gomez? You didn't know how you felt about being talked about as though you weren't there, but you didn't have to wait much longer before they both walked up to greet you on Wednesday. Wednesday, have you gotten to, into the school spirit yet? Morticia asked her daughter, who was only looking unimpressed. Can't you see I'm just dying of school spirit? Wednesday replied, making a chuckle slip past your lips, causing her, Morticia, and Gomez's attention to be brought to you, and you immediately choked. Sorry, I am apologize for laughing, you said, but Mortish, Mortish, Morticia and Gomez only smiled. Whilst Wednesday brought your hand to her lips, mirror, mirroring the actions earlier in hopes of relieving some of your anxieties. It's quite all right, dear. I'm just enlightened that someone can see the humor in our daughter's darkness. Gomez replied, You must be the girl who stole out Wednesday's heart right from out of her chest. Tell me, was it as dark as she claims? You look at Wednesday and smile, feeling the slight, a slightly at ease with her parents' repetition of you. Oh, as dark as it comes. And then some of some of it she may i'm sorry she is forever my black diamond for her shine may be non-existent to most but to me you tug at your girlfriend close in an outburst of self-confidence as her free hand found found home on your shoulder she shines brighter than any wednesday tempor temporarily didn't know how to respond to your genuine words but morticia and gomez couldn't help but love you even more than they did before now that they got to see how you treated their daughter and vi vice versa Though Wednesday reminded them that they were younger and that's the type of identification they'd want for their daughter, you were happy that Wednesday had found you. Oh, oh, you're becoming an Adams already, my dear, Morticia said finally as she reaches for your cheek. Just don't go breaking our daughter's heart before we can ignite the, the welcoming ceremony, she adds before as, as soon as she pulls away. Gomez goes in for a big hug, taking you away from Wednesday, who only watches in slight amusement as you get squeezed into her father's famous bear hug. Hugs. I can't wait to you for you to become a viper, my little mouse, he says, pulling away to address his daughter. Rest assured, my little viper, upon the next parents' evening, will be sure to bring along Pugs Pugsley and Uncle Vester your to meet your future wife. I'm ecstatic, Wednesday replies. Returning to your side to grasp at your hand, your hand once more, you honestly had no idea why you were so afraid of meeting Wednesday's parents. At first, you at first, but now you adore them, and they adored you. Seeing how you treated the rest of treated the daughter, the rest of the evening, they asked you a plethora of questions of how and why you loved Wednesday. You answered them truthfully and honestly, as you could, as you could that. By the end of each question, you gave Morticia and Gomez. You swore you could see Wednesday's dark eyes beaming with love, her cheeks aflame with a red flush as her hand gripped yours, your arm tightly, almost at the p point of pure possessiveness, and you were holding on to her just as tightly.